Jesus, we thank you for this another day that you have made. We do rejoice and we're glad and thank you, Father, for the privilege of prayer that we can come boldly into the throne of grace to obtain grace and to find mercy to help in the time of need. We need you, Lord, in our lives. There's things that we are dealing with. Some of us, nobody knows. But Father, we know you know what we have need of even before we ask. So we ask you to Think through our minds and speak through my lips your divine word in Jesus' name. And all agree with that prayer said. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're continuing our series on accessing grace by faith. And I want to talk to you today about overcoming addictions. Overcoming addictions. This message really affects all of us in one way or another. I don't know about you, but in my life, I have been addicted to things, and I have overcome them. As a believer, I'm challenged by the Word of God to live in such of a way that I don't ever enter back into those things that I once was free from. And then, for all of us, there may be friends or loved ones, family members, that are struggling right now. We know it. And they've got addictions bondages in their life, and God's given us a word of freedom that I believe that will not only bless you, but it will minister to them as well. I want to look at Luke chapter 13 today as a text for this message on overcoming addictions. The Bible says that as he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, I want you to notice that he was teaching. I'm going to actually teach you today. How to overcome addictions, no matter what it is. And as Jesus was, he was teaching in one of the synagogues, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. I, I so encourage you that when you read the Bible, make sure you read it with comprehension mm -hmm. and understanding. This is a situation where this woman had a spirit of infirmity. She had a physical sickness and disease that prevented her from standing up straight. But I felt compelled of the Lord to use this to illustrate addiction and bondage. You can have a spirit of addiction. It is some of us, and there's things in our lives we've been doing since we were teenagers and just haven't really been able to break free from that addiction. Notice that addiction is first a spiritual problem before it's a natural problem. Yes. That's why you can go to a rehab or rehabilitation center, or you can try different methods and, and, and not be able to really be free from those things because the problem is first spiritual before it's natural. Yes. Yes. So this woman had a spiritual problem, and notice also that she couldn't herself lift herself up. And there have been many of us who have tried to quit, tried to stop doing those things that we don't want to do, and we've not been able to do it successfully. So in the same way, he sees this woman, and in verse 12, he says, when he saw her, he called her to him, and he said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. This one verse really is the platform for this whole message, and so I'll deal with it closely as we get uh, to that part of the message. But as it goes on, he speaks to this woman. He says, woman, you are loose. And then he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Amen. Not only did he say something, he did something. Yeah. We know that he did everything to please the Father, and faith works by saying, and faith works by doing and you'll see very clearly that in overcoming addiction, as we are to do anything that we do in life, we're to do it by faith. Yes. And it's going to require you and I to be able to say some things and do some things. Yes. 
Verse 14 goes on to read that the ruler of the synagogue when he answered in indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which a man ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, not on the Sabbath day. Jesus didn't like that. The Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, a child of God, ought not this woman, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And I have that same disposition today. Ought not the children of God, bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, ought not we be loose from any addiction. Yes. Yes. It ought not be that a believer has areas, areas of bondage in their life. Things that they can't stop or can't quit simply because of the addiction. So in talking about accessing the grace of God by faith, specifically, specifically what we're really looking at is accessing the grace of deliverance. We've learned in this series that in Romans chapter 5 that we are to stand in the grace of God. The Bible says through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Grace is an unmerited favor. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It is undeserved favor. Another way to look at what grace is, it is when, you, when, when somebody gives you something that you don't deserve. They've done something for you. They've given something to you that you don't deserve. Well, the way you access the grace of God is by faith. Another thing we've learned about the grace of God is that it's manifold. There's many sides to it. Yes. Just like a carburetor sits on a manifold to distribute to each cylinder the mix of oxygen and gasoline. The grace of God, which comes from God, sits in our hearts and distributes in every area of our lives his undeserved favor. Yes. Him giving us in every area of life all that we need to live a good life yes. to the full until it overflows. Yes. It is the manifold grace of God. Yes. Well, we need to know how to access those different areas. Even as we've learned in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible says, for by grace you have been saved. On the day that you accepted Jesus Christ, five things happened for sure. The day that you were saved, five things happened. The Greek word soteria means salvation, healing, deliverance, preservation, and prosperity. When you were born again, you were set into a new life that God prepared before you were in your mother's womb. He set you in this new life, a life of blessing. Amen? Amen. 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 And the Bible teaches us that by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Well, deliverance is a part of the package. That means when you were saved, you were healed, and you were delivered. And that's a truth that most don't understand. Then in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1, the Bible says to stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, a lot of us here uh, may not have any specific addictions in our lives presently. I believe all of us have been delivered from something if we were to honestly admit it. Amen. Things in our lives previously that were we did, and it was really beyond our control. We couldn't stop. But yet we sit here today and we're free. Amen. There are people that are listening, <laughs> watching me right now, that have been addicted to cocaine, and they're delivered right now. Amen. There have been people who were alcoholics, and they're delivered right now in church, listening online, and they're totally free. I mean, they used to, they were a chain smoker. Or, or, or they used to drink a uh, you know, bottle of alcohol every day and, and, and just would overcome sexual addictions today, and we are absolutely free. Praise God. Praise God. 
Well, here's a word of exhortation to you that I want you to listen to. Because I don't want you to dis discount this message because you're sitting today free. The Bible says, stand fast in the freedom of which Christ has made you free. And he charges us to not be entangled again. It's possible from the pulpit to the parking lot for all of us to go back and do things and be addicted to things that we've got no business doing right. right. Amen? And so we have to learn then, how do you overcome the temptation to do those things and actually doing those things habitually that have bound us in our lives? Matter of fact, when he talks about standing fast, in just a few verses later, in verse number four, he says, you've become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law you have fallen, everybody say fallen, fallen. From, grace. from grace. See, see, we're supposed to stand in the grace of God. There's three things that the Bible teaches us to do as believers. We're supposed to run the race with patience, amen? Yes. But we're also supposed to walk by faith and not by sight, amen? Yes. But the third thing, which is what we're teaching you, is to be able to stand in the grace of God. You need to know how to do that because there are things that are coming along and in your path that can cause you to fall from what God has given you that you don't deserve. You need to be able to stand fast in the freedoms in those things. Grace is the moving walkway. Like in an airport, if you want to get from this point to the next with little to no effort, all you've got to do is step on this moving walkway. It even tells you you can walk on this side or you can stand on that side. But if you stand on that moving walkway with little effort or to no effort on your own, you can get to where you want to be. In the same way, you don't have to try to quit smoking. You don't have to try to quit getting drunk. You don't have to try to give up a promiscuous lifestyle. No, in Christ, you access the grace of You've accessed something that he's given you, and it itself takes you into the place where you want to be. I am so excited about this message because in it is the freedom that you long for and that you desire. Amen? Amen. 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 Another passage of scripture to be mindful of before we get into the nuts and bolts of the, the message is in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 20. In verse 20, Peter's writing to the church. And he says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and they are entangled again in, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. This is, again, another exhortation for all of us, whether we're addicted today or free from addiction. The exhortation is this. You can be in a place where you have escaped things that were polluting you. Drugs, and pornography, alcohol, cigarettes. Things that, that are literally destructive habits. I mean, overeating. You can have an approval addiction. The Bible teaches us that it's possible for believers to escape things that used to have a grip on their life and again be entangled in them. You know, the devil has a way of being able to push all your buttons at the same time. He'll make you want to cuss. Come on, he'll, he'll make you want to have a smoke. And, and you, 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 you've been there. You know, he'll, he'll create a concoction of problems and pressure in your life to get you to do something that you've been delivered from that you used to do. So the Bible teaches us you've got to take a position. And you've got to, you've got to know how to overcome things in life, or else you'll find yourself again entangled in things that you were once delivered from. The Bible even goes on to say that it's like a dog that returns to vomit. I don't know if you've ever done something that you, a part of you wanted to do it, but your heart didn't want to do it. And that struggle went on, and you ended up doing something, and afterward you felt like a dog having returned to vomit. Or a pig, after being washed, goes back to wallowing in the mire. Amen? Yeah. So let me show you from the word of God how to access the grace of deliverance. In other words, I want to talk to you about overcome. How do you overcome addictions? Well, the first thing 
is you must first acknowledge the fact. I was talking to my brother, actually we were at Thanksgiving dinner, and I was just stirred up about this message, and you know, I asked him, I said, because I, I deal with people that deal with all kinds of things, and he used to drink like a fifth of vodka or rum a day. And born in the same household, mom and dad, preachers, etc. And he'll tell his own testimony. He's, he's a minister in, in, of himself. But he used to be addicted to alcohol. I mean, it was destroying his life. And yet today he's married, has his own house, owns his own business, very successful business, has cars and vehicles, where there was a period of time where he was literally destroying his life. I asked him, what was the biggest thing that helped you to overcome the addictions in your life? And he told me, the first thing that a person has to do is they've got to acknowledge the problem. Oh, yeah. Amen. And that really is the big deal. First, you have to admit, if you're going to overcome it, You've got to admit that it's a problem. A lot of times, for things in our lives, we really don't want to admit that it is a problem. Do you have to have a cup of coffee? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with coffee. I didn't say there was anything wrong with coffee. I'm just asking. Do you have to, every single day of your life, whether one cup in the morning or many cups throughout the day, do you have to? Could say you're addicted to coffee. But you, again, a person would struggle. I don't see any problem with that. All right, fine. Guess what? You won't overcome. <laughs> you're going to keep doing it, right? So, whether we're talking about coffee or cocaine, the first thing that you've got to do to overcome it is you've got to acknowledge the fact. Now, notice I use these words carefully. You've got to acknowledge the fact. The fact is, your body is addicted to doing this. Yes. Yeah. That's the fact. That's, right. That's different than the truth. Jesus said, thy, in his prayer in John chapter 17, he says, thy word, O Lord, is truth. That's right. The truth is the word of God. There may be things that are fact in the world that we see, but God's Truth always supersedes the fact. A little bit more about that in a moment. But you've got to first acknowledge the fact. And the real fact is, is not that I'm an alcoholic. That's one of the things I don't like about AA. There's a lot that I do like about the program and other rehabilitative. But the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to acknowledge that you are an alcoholic. Well, the Bible that I teach, the, the, the Bible that I read and believe, says that death and power, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes. So if you keep saying you're an alcoholic, come on. Yes. That's like shooting yourself in the foot. But if you say that my body is addicted to alcohol, you're acknowledging that there is a part of you that hasn't broken free from this particular substance. Let me show you a few scriptures along this line. <clears throat> so first you have to admit that you have a problem. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 13, the Bible says, He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. But notice, he says, whoever covers his sin... If you cover your addiction, you hide it from people. You know, pornography is one of the most dangerous things because it's something that you can do in secret and nobody can know. Well, sometimes people are addicted to nicotine and uh, you can kind of mask that. You know, put on a little perfume. If you use Hall's mental lift, it's a little bit stronger than a breath mint. You can really mask <laughs> No, no, I knew that, right? I remember... Uh, well, one dear sister came to me between service, and she's been here for many years, love her as a mother in the church, and she said, Pastor, one day you got to let me tell my testimony, because uh, today, to this day, she is free from nicotine Amen. and other things in her life, but that wasn't always the case. Even as a believer, she was bound. 
I remember I ran into her in a store one time, and you know, you don't have a chance to freshen up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pastor, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> it always interests me when uh, I'm driving along, and somebody in the other car is smoking marijuana. Y'all know the evil weed? <laughs> and you can smell the weed in your car. <laughs> Here's the reality. If you're covering it, you won't be free from it. Right? right. right? Yeah. So a lot of times what keeps people out of church is they don't want to be seen. In other words, they don't want to live a hypocritical life. And really my passion in this message is for individuals that are from 18 to 28 years old. They're the most absent group in the church. Mm-hmm. Not just this church. I'm talking about the body of Christ around the world. They're thoroughly saved, believe in Jesus, but they've got things in their lifestyle that have them in a hole that they can't get rid of, and they don't want to see themselves as as a hypocrite. They don't want to come to church. My thing is, you don't have to cover it. If you smell like marijuana, come to church. (laughs) It's not going to keep you from going to heaven. Now, you might smell like hell when you get there. (laughs) But if you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, nothing that you can do, no sin, no sickness, nothing nothing can keep you out of heaven that's in your life. The only thing that keeps you out of heaven is rejecting Jesus. And if you've accepted him, then there's nothing to hide. If you're bound by something, still struggling with it, you've got to acknowledge that fact if you're ever going to get out of it. Amen? Amen. Let let, let me define the word addict. Addiction. It means to devote or surrender oneself to something habitually or obsessively. And it doesn't just have to be a substance. It could be uh, an emotional thing. It could be an approval addiction. It could be many different things. But when you devote yourself or surrender yourself to something habitually or obsessively, it is an addiction. The Bible actually talks about individuals that addicted themselves to ministering to the saints. That's a good thing to be addicted to, serving in the church. But anytime there's something in your life that you've given yourself over to and you can't get away from it and you're doing it habitually, it's an addiction. And you first got to be able to acknowledge that you have that in order to overcome. You must first acknowledge the fact. Now, again, let's focus on the fact part. 